Hey, brother, who do you think is the funniest member of Rule Zero Squad? Now, what's your favorite comment joke of theirs? I think Ryan brings good laughs. He does. Ryan is like British humor. It's like Monty Python. <laughs> People are like, if you get it, you laugh your ass off. If you don't get it, you're like, <laughs> Ryan, so. people just don't get his humor. Who's the funniest one on there? You mean besides John Fitch? <laughs> I think John Fitch is the funniest member of Rule Zero, but he's unintentionally funny. One of the robot dogs. I'm saying this robot dog in real life was pretty surreal and terrible. <laughs> yeah, Cappy's pretty funny. He can be pretty funny, too. Who's the funniest member? What's up, fellas? Good morning. Welcome to the stream. Running a little bit late. Technical issues. Had to get the computer all uh, upgraded. And then, of course, as soon as you change the hardware, everything has to go. Anyways, let's, uh, let's switch off of this. Let's get back to just you and me. Fellas. Fellas. All right. Um, it's kind of a fun one. Hopefully your Saturday is good. I'm hoping you guys are doing well. I mean, those of you in Europe are probably enjoying half your afternoon already and the rest of you. Goddamn Windows 98. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have fun. It's, uh, well, I mean, it's not fun. It's C-SPAN. I don't know. It was weird. It was like, I, I know I always say I hate it. And then I bring up some goofy Twitter interaction, but I, I kind of found it interesting. So obviously, like once you get to a certain size, anything you say is going to have somebody sniping at you. And that's just part of the course. Remember, this one guy is like reflects these videos like, look at this. When you get fresh and fit numbers, then you can have an opinion. And I was just laughing. He's like, who the hell are you? And I just kind of laughed at that because I was like, I don't think guys really get this. I'm not trying to be like the White Claw Power Hour. I'm not trying to uh, bait you guys with web and eight shit or any of that nonsense. This is like. I aspire to like C-SPAN. You guys remember C-SPAN? Like the, the government channel and they show like boring debates and whatever. It's like that. Like I really do like boring, red-pilled, just meaty content because it's just so goddamn useful. Like and I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that there's a bunch of like OG guys that still are around to talk to and a bunch of new guys. Like the Patreon is wonderful for that because you can't forget why the heck the red pill is here in the first place? If you guys don't know, the whole reason it's here is because guys have basically, um, life's failed them everywhere, everywhere. Their priests failed them. Their parents have failed them. Their wives have failed. Like everybody's failing them. And I don't mean it isn't as like it's their fault. I just mean as in guys have all this desire to be guided to something better, to learn from other guys. And it's just fail state after fail state. And so red pill was literally... Well, it's either this or we rent a white van and put a manifesto up on YouTube, you know? And so, like, I see a lot of the the nonsense, like, you know, the chick from prisons ragging on us, the big redhead, red Sonya or whatever, talking her trash. Lauren Southern, the trailer trash single mom, which did not see that coming. And after all of this stuff, you have to realize there at the other end of this, there is a guy with a struggling marriage or a struggling relationship or a lackluster sex life. And as long as you can keep that in mind, you realize, okay, now let's just stick to the tools. Let's stick to the tools. So the tools today, I gave those of you guys on the sub stack and, you know, I'll put a link in the chat. Um, I'll put a link in the chat to it. They got a bonus because uh, I'm at the stage of the book where it's near the end. The end of the drafting stuff anyway. And so there's a whole bunch of cleanup. So it was instead of the one weekly post it's going to be three and then the first ones was it was about communication and then about uh deliberate anger and then uncharted territory and so i'm going to kind of i'm just going to kind of mirror those here because a lot of you guys may not know a lot of the backstory when you're writing it down you can really get so many details about it and i figure it'll be a good learning experience at the very at the very least when you guys are out there shitting on whammon you can at least learn what the hell you're doing and do it properly. Cause like, there's so much of it out there. That's just lame. Just lame. I'm like, dude, I have no problems making fun of women. They make it so easy with that bobblehead stuff they do. But a lot of the guys are like, you're just a hooker. And I was like, you can do so much better than that. Even if she is a hooker, I guess I just expect the best out of you guys, you know? And when you let me down, you let me down. 
All right. You guys talking about the necklace? Jeez. All right. Fair enough. The only thing that sucks, though. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going for... I have a new idea for the look this summer, so it's going to be good. Last year was Waspy Chic, which I'm going to continue, but I'm adding some island to it, too. Influenced by my brother, who loves this stuff. Anyways. So, Uncharted Territory. Anger, and then Communication. We'll do it in that order. I think that's a good order. Yeah, we'll do it in that order. So, until then, let's have some fun. I've talked to Riot Stone once. I'm pretty sure the whole conversation, I pushed him like pretty hard. What was hard, Ariel? Like the therapist will essentially give them SSRIs, which I think you know, like you know the, the sexual effects that SSRIs have in the body, right? That's some. Like yeah. there's tons of like MAOs and like tricyclic stuff. You're talking about like the, the type of SSRIs that used to be given to pedophiles. We don't give those to men. We don't give those to men. We don't give those to men. But he's not as informed as like I think oh. people like to be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I look at my own ads and I just laugh. I just laugh. Okay, uh, I guess the last last preamble, um, rule zero is, is it on Glenn's channel today? Whoever it is, they don't have redirects turned on, so I can't direct you over there. I don't know. Follow, follow us on Twitter. Whoever on Twitter has the original tweet about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it is. It is Glenn. It'll be Glenn. And uh, Uncharted Territory. Yeah, yeah. Praxeology Volume 1 Frame Kindle. This title's not available for purchase. Why? Um, there's no reason for that. The best I can suggest is double check your country code. Because I know for mine, a lot of them, I put the Amazon.ca. And if you're an American, go into .ca. It'll say it's not available. You have to go to .com. So Amazon's really weird that way. All right. Yeah, so Glenn, turn your redirects on. And I can actually bring the audience straight over to you afterwards as, nice, as a nice raid. I've explained it like eight times in group chats. Trust me, we're good. Okay, Uncharted Territory. What the hell is he talking about? Well, it turns out we're in kind of an interesting time. Like, obviously, I, I crap on people who sit here and they're like, oh, well, the game has changed. You don't know the game. You're old. It, things have changed since 2010. And I'm like, all right, maybe, maybe. Um, but most of the time, like, people haven't changed. People haven't changed in thousands of years. But... The one things that have changed are the technology. So all that means is like, oh my God, instead of getting a, a number close on a flip phone, you're getting a girl's QR code for her snap. It's like, it's still the same thing. <laughs> Ryan, make a solo video on it first. I will do what I want to, sir. I make the content that I think is useful. I follow the 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 Apple Apple computer technique. People don't know what they want till you give it to them. Anyways, uncharted territory. So summing up basically is that people that are older than you don't understand a lot of the new like the changes in the sexual marketplace the new technology that sort of thing so when they give you advice it's the same as like you know hey you get a job just shake the ceo's hand look him in the eye and you're like dude it's an electronic system that's got it has to have keyword searches otherwise you don't even get in the door and the ceo never even knows who you are so a lot of the people older than you weren't able to capitalize on the new technology so they don't know how to adapt what they know to something new so it's not very helpful it doesn't help you at all it's like oh and i get it because like a lot of guys just want to throw out the entire piece of advice then but there is good stuff in there the only thing difference is the technology meanwhile everybody younger than you has no experience and they don't know what they're doing like god knows how many times do i have to look up at that stupid twitter and see some, like, 19 lessons I learned from 19 years on this earth. And I'm just like, fuck you, kid. Do you have any idea how little you know about anything? I mean, obviously, no, he doesn't. And I'm not saying this to say shame the guy. I don't, I'd like to think I wasn't that stupid at 19, but I probably was. I probably was. Most of us were. But it's just too easy now to build a following. Like, who's the newest one? Uh, sneaker there, the, the guy who likes the, the cuties movie. And like seeing his girlfriend get railed. I didn't know this. His girlfriend put me on blast on Twitter too. And I was like, who the hell is this? Just somebody, something like, name names. Don't be a coward. And I'm like, why don't you eat all the dicks? And then somebody brought that up. And I'm like, oh, is that, is that that chick? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, number three will shock you. Yeah, Black Murphy. Exactly. I don't know what it is, man. It's just something about the moral finger wanging comes the most from the guys who have like the most embarrassing sex lives. I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. 
granted, I don't really, I've kind of blocked all of that stuff. And when it finds its way to my timeline, it's usually because other people are screenshot and shit. And I just decide to shit post it. Anyways, beside the point, uncharted territory. Now there's the people that are your age. And the problem is the people your age are just guessing. Like everybody, nobody knows what they're doing. And this is, this is for a lot of things. If you're in a new emerging market, like if you're a YouTube content creator, if you're, if you're um, in e-commerce, if you're doing drop shipping, like nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody loves to say they know what they're doing, but they don't. I know this because I've listened to them and I've watched it and I've tried it and things don't work. Well, it worked for me. All right. Well, that's a different statement than this works. So remember that. Never, never listen to somebody who says this works. Always listen to somebody who says this worked for me. Because you got to remember there's there's a chance, and this is all about the mental models and the praxeology that we talk about in the red pill all the time. There's a chance that the thing that I did, make a field report of it, wrap it in a nice container, give it a nice story, bam, mental model, good to go. There's a chance that there's some unknown variable in there that makes a difference. Now, if you want a simple example, just picture like a tall, like the Chad type, the six foot two, nice long hair, like all the whatever, fill in the blanks of whatever chat archetype you want to use here. And he'll say some goofy, like, relation, like just walk up to girls. You don't know any of these stupid tips and tricks. And yeah, for him it works, but meanwhile it's because he's just a damned dreamy heartthrob. He didn't know that if he, if he didn't look like that, he might have to put some more effort into his approach. <clears throat> but, but, you know, you can't tell a fish. Fish can't tell you what water is in the same way. So there's chance that guys are naturals. And I, and I know this one is, is, is controversial, but did you know on the internet that some people lie so that you'll like them and buy their products? I know. I know. Threw me off too the first couple times I heard it. I didn't want to believe it. I doubted it. I got into a fight. How dare you, sir? There's no way this guy with the Martin Luther King Abbey, there's no way that this guy with the Marcus Aurelius statue was his profile picture. There's no way these guys would lie. Why would they lie to me? They don't know me. They're not getting anything from me. Why would they lie? Yeah, shocking. Shocking. But then I was like, why are they lying? It turns out some people just lie because they like to lie. There's no reason. Just because. So yeah, you can't really trust anybody. Uh, I got wingman in the chat here. Thanks, Ryan. Got my first day after my wife left me three years ago, but now I'm enjoying women. Thanks to you. Big ups. Dude, I'm just glad you're getting out there again. That's awesome. Like I said... Uh, it's funny, uh, it's a small side topic here. It is funny how sometimes guys, uh, like if they leave their wife, but they still love her like a lot, uh, widows are especially big on this one. They have a hard time dating because they compare every girl they're with to their ex. It never works out because the girl never mat that never lines up. And so they kind of have to learn the idea of like a hate fuck, which is interesting. It's like, oh, you don't have to like a girl to have sex. Like, no, you can actually dislike her. I've had sex with girls I disliked and some of the best sex ever because they just don't care <laughs> and when you don't care you're on him or what's that you're lacking inhibitions it's basically like alcohol for for ex-alcoholics just hate hate her just a little bit anyways back to uncharted territory yeah and so this is what I liked about the red pill is that it was just guys and most of it was trash don't get me wrong <clears throat> like I'll sit on here and talk to you guys about, you know, a ton of mental models. I'll talk to you about the assertive bill of rights. I'll talk to you about why aloofness is a superpower. <clears throat> I'll talk to you about control game versus, uh, or I guess control game is the one as opposed to being aloof. Anyways, talk to you about getting laid like a warlord, the Mallard Cove Tinder guide, the human sock puppet guide to managing your bitches. Hundreds of things like this. Hundreds. And it won't matter. Because you have no idea if it's true. So what do you do? If it's uncharted territory, you have everybody here, nobody knows what they're doing, what do you do about it? Well, it's, the trick is you just got to try stuff. You just try stuff yourself. You don't want to commit to everything. And somebody's already mentioned the bucket on your head thing. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it's just a matter. And it's not just a matter of trying things willy-nilly. There's like a system to it. Like obviously, unless you're coming from a position of like zero skills at whatsoever, I'm not here for incels. I don't, they can fucking burn for all I care. They've made it very clear that they do not want help. They want to see, then whatever. It's like, fill your boots, man. 
That's why I always hate that question. You hear it like Troy loves to ask it on rule zero. Like, well, what about those black pilled guys that say, you know, whammon or something, something, something like, I don't care. They don't care. Why do I need to care about their sex life more than they do? If they cared about their sex life, they'd make some effort. Instead, they've built an entire Lord of the Rings iceberg fan fiction of lore about how whammon ain't shit. <laughs> and it's like, how am I going to compete with that? With a couple little... You know, hey, hit the gym, bro. Like, that's not going to work. No, they can burn. Just don't just don't rent a van and come after me. You know, do a different school shooting. Uh, <laughs> bucket on head. Hey, there he is. Yeah, so when you're listening to something, it should resonate with you. Like a little bit. At least half of it. You know, even some of it. When you hear a guy talking about dealing with his wife and he starts bringing up a certain type of fight, like... uh where you notice like just before Shark Week, you always have arguments over something that's nothing to do with anything and you take it seriously and you find it des escalates into you being a jerk or whatever. You hear somebody say that, you're like, you know what, I've been in that situation. That makes sense. And he goes, yeah, the things I did, I just flipped it on his head. I realized it's just not take it personally. She's just emotional because of her hormones or whatever. And it's nothing against her. It doesn't mean she's a bad person. Whether that even matters is an issue. And he goes like, oh, that's interesting. It's me too. So what do you do about it? It's like, oh, I just lean into it. It's like, look, if you're going to be irritable anyway i might as well at least have some fun with this and you just go nagging hard and the guy's like so what changed well she didn't change she didn't change anything but i had fun and a lot of guys get mad how dare you treat the women that bad and that's when you realize they're still too busy moralizing to actually learn anything right as opposed to the other guy it's like well that's interesting like that flips the whole dynamic on his head it's basically framed differently instead of how do you fix this fight or how do you how do you take responsibility for your wife's emotions? How do you get her to stop doing what she wants to do? Which is fool's errands anyway. The guy's like, how do I how do I navigate this in the best way possible? And yeah, sometimes it's just, hey, you're going to be cranky anyway. I might as well have some fun with it. I'll have great fun with it. And of course, oh, wow, that's an interesting thing. Yeah, keep a trap of their cycles a superpower. That was an interesting one too. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a piece of advice we usually give guys early on is just to get, I mean, count to 31 if you can. But some guys get the, there's apps to track this stuff. Uh, the one we usually suggest, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was something simple like Cycle or uh, Flow or I don't know, something like that. Anyways, I'm sure you could find it if you really looked. And for a lot of guys, it was just pay attention. You're not tracking it because, you know, estrus, you got to wear the red dress or anything like that. No, no, it's just you pay attention to the dynamics of your relationship. Are extra loving, heightened sexuality, more fights, cranky extra hungry, stuff like that. And then you just notice over, you know, and you only need to do it for like two or three months. Use two, three months to see the cycle. And you notice, hey, dude, a week before Shark Week, like clockwork, she's a bitch. It's crazy. And the point of that is just to teach guys, again, in this uncharted territory that we live in, where somebody keeps trying to like deal with it at face value. It's like, oh. And then you realize it has nothing to do with you. Whether she thinks you did the dishes right or not, that's weird. It seems to be more related to her time of the month on how big of a dick I am or not. And then once the guy realizes that, you're like, well, why am I getting offended? This has nothing to do with me. Of course, you get the guys, then they have the urge to like tell them like, oh, this is just because of your things there. What the fuck? And it's like, just keep your mouth shut, man. Look, you know the rules. Just play the game. Stop spouting the rules. Stop telling her how smart you are. You realize this is because your cycle is here, here. And it's like, shut up. Just realize she's cranky and laugh. How dare you, sir? Take this seriously. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Right on that. Anyways, and, and I, I do want to preface this. I hate don't eat paint warnings. I'll explain the don't eat paint warnings later, but I hate the don't eat paint warning here. But for guys, do not hyper focus on this. Most of these mental models are meant as like a, a back burner kind of casual napkin, napkin math level of, of effort. You don't want to sit here being like day one, you know, three out of 10 crankiness, four out of 10 sexuality. No, just, just keep it, keep it in the back of your mind. And then, and then you tend to be better off. So then that's how you kind of handle uncharted territory. And that's how a lot of these guys did are like, okay, nobody knows what they're doing. Well, there's some things that I do pretty well naturally. And there's some things I do really poorly naturally. And the guys who do things well naturally start sharing their stories. And like I just told you 10 minutes before, a lot of guys have like, hidden variables they're super attractive so they can get away with stuff you wouldn't get away with stuff like that so when one guy is telling you this thing it doesn't mean anything but you get that one guy talking to another guy 
I, I do the same thing and it doesn't work for me. And the other guy too, yeah, it doesn't work for me either. And you find out it's only like, you know, a couple guys get it to work. Most guys don't. You realize, okay, there's clearly something else at work here. And till you get some autist who like reads through all these ones and puts two and two together. It's like, hey, how tall are you guys? Uh, is your wife pregnant? Like all these little, and then you start to realize there's like, there are patterns that pick up. Once you get more data points, you get more patterns. And I know everybody loves to call this, oh, so this is like the, uh, what do they call it? I hate to reference the Destiny Chicks, but um, it's like voodoo wisdom or some like old school bar. I don't know, whatever they were saying. Something to, to say it was like less than science. And I'm like, it really is the scientific method, man. It really is. Just do a bunch of experiments, test the hypothesis, narrow down, narrow down the, the controlling variables, and then just play forward. So this is, and this is where it comes from. So if one guy says something, you can dismiss it probably, two guys, maybe. Once you start getting to three guys, five guys, seven guys, 10 guys, you start to realize, okay, there's something to this one. Like everybody's not getting the exact same results, but it's leaning towards like a better sex life, a, work sex, a worse sex life, more chance of divorce, less chance of divorce. And so you get this kind of fuzzy arrow pointing in the direction you need to go. And this is all that red pilled ever was. When you're charting the territory, we're not sitting here trying to map out the topography of the, uh, make a chart with the topography of the terrain. It's like, no, it's more so like there be dragons and there's, there's the, there's the Chinese. Let's go trade spices there. There's the spice route. And it's fuzzy and it's going to be fuzzy. It can't not be fuzzy because as soon as you start making it specific, it changes the variables. I think Rolo talks about all the time where just observing a variable changes it. And so if we hyper focus to like a, a, a treatsy on this is everything to do with a woman having a temper tantrum based on her. And then there's like a chart, like her cycle is here. Her last time she ate was here. Her BMI is here. Her best friend, her last time she called her mom and you take all these variables, you plug it into a machine and it comes out. Today is a day you're going to have a fight over the dishes. As soon as you start doing that, everything's going to change. Even if it was, it's not going to be correct, but even if it was, as soon as that happens, everybody's attitudes change. So then it becomes useless. So you don't want a picture book on how to handle female relationships. Hey, Couch, thought it was summer. Where's this raining coming from? Oh, that might be, if you're hearing it on the microphone. Oh, yeah, you might be. That's because I have tinnitus. I have tinnitus, and so I can't sleep without rain on the other channel. It's just how it works. Here, I'll tell you what. Usually if I turn it down just a touch, that'll go away. Yeah, an Excel spreadsheet, exactly. That's funny that you mentioned the Excel spreadsheet because that was the old, the old Roycey quote. Uh, the old Roycey quote about spreadsheet, man. And it was this, there was this wonderful Reddit post and it's hard to find now because the guy got embarrassed and deleted it long ago and the archives kind of got deleted. But it was this guy who every time he got shut down by his wife, he would write it down in a spreadsheet what the excuse was and when he offered. And then it was like, he got up to like a hundred things. And some of the excuses were lame as fuck. I remember this one. It was like the episode of friends she used to like was on, like not even a new episode a rerun, <laughs> a rerun. Uh, stuff like that, right? And so what happened is finally she went on a work trip and after some like pretty harsh rejection and he just emailed her the fucking spreadsheet. It's like, air. And everybody's like, that guy is such a jerk. I can't believe this. Whammon, leave him. He's horrible. And I remember there was one red pill in the guy chat. I can't remember which guy it was. It's somebody like names long gone in the annals of time or annals of time, whatever you want to call it. And he's like, does that really sound like a guy who's just like angry? Does Or does that sound like a guy at, at the end of his rope out of pure desperation through a Hail Mary play? Do you think he thinks this is going to get you in bed? It's like, no, that's a guy that has no other options. And this is why Archwinger had this wonderful post. We are here for the lovable losers. Again, uncharted territory. We're here for the lovable losers. And he mentioned that. It's like, look, everybody's looking to make this some kind of moral paragon it's the the last stand of men it's the conservative this it's this and that it's like no dudes do you realize this place's existence is because everybody everybody in a man's life has failed him up until this point and he has failed himself to this point it is literally the last ditch effort do you really think they're sending their best they're not they're not most of the guys here are absolute trash and that's and the part that makes me laugh the most, and I know this is part, this part is meta, but it makes me laugh, is like knowing that, 
knowing that the new guys here and even some of the older ones basically have zero sex life. Their wives hate them. A lot of fighting, you know, issues with this issues with that. Still, still the critics are still worse because at least we don't go to prison. <laughs> at least we don't go to prison. Like some people I know. Ian, what are uh, not Ryan Stone? I'm, I think he's the most important guy in the world. Ryan Stone. Give a fuck about Ryan Stone gone back and forth blah, blah, yeah. blah. rhinestone does not pass the six foot test he's not even a man so i don't give a fuck with rhinestone at least we don't go to prison i love the way girls smell i love how you know, they always make sure by and large they shower and they just have um an amazing an amazing smell to them in general so i remember telling you that i felt bad like, oh, it sucks. He's going to go to prison four to eight years. You know, as much as even though the guy can't stand me and he's insufferable and I don't really I'm not a fan of him either. Like, I felt bad. But then I see him on Twitter because he's got me blocked for years. Now I go on a Twitter. Somebody sent me a thing. I got to check this out. There's some dude shitting on Rolo because his girlfriend wrote him a love note. And Rolo's like, your wife never wrote you a love note. You post it on social media. I'm like, what the hell? The more I see this Pat Stedman guy, I like him. And then Stedman, I realize he hasn't learned a damn thing. He's still sitting there talking like a shit don't stink. The same, I hate Rolo. He's a low IQ moron stuff. I was like, Jesus, you know what? Enjoy prison, dude. <laughs> Talk, have your kid call us in like 18 years when he needs the advice. Or is it a daughter? In that case, don't call. I don't like those girls with daddy issues. My dad was in prison. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, and then Tate, yeah. For, oh, I don't know. He, I know he's not in jail yet. It's just he's officially been charged and they took all his money. So that sucks because I'm pretty sure a lot of it wasn't his money and it was money from other people. So yikes. Anyways. So the uncharted territory and I wanted to mention Nick Redstar here is like guys are surprised the rule of the game has changed. The rules of the game have changed and they haven't. That's the one thing. And I get it. Everybody likes to say that it's not true. The game, the game is the game. What attracted women in ancient Rome is still what attracts women today. That part has not changed. The game is fine. The only thing that has changed is the technology and the reach. That's it. So obviously the competition is fiercer because your monkey sphere or the people that you have access to is bigger. You know, you got online dating and you got larger social activities. Even the car, the fact that you have a car means you can travel 30 kilometers outside of your town and meet people. So yeah, that part hasn't changed. But there's also tools to benefit you too, right? Like these things can work for you. You can run a numbers game. You can practice. Back in the day, you had one, maybe two tries to hit on a girl before the rest of the town knew you as the creepy guy and nobody wanted to date you anymore. Nowadays, you can screw up dates 100, 200 at a time and still keep going. So it's, I don't know, it skews to the girl side of things, obviously, but it's not impossible. And on top of that, a lot of guys have just given up 30% last I checked from that stupid stat. Everybody loves. They always have this 30% of men aren't getting laid with the assumption that they would have been in any other time, but it's just now because of Tinder, I would argue that those men wouldn't have gotten laid in any generation. It's just, we have so many people right now back then 30% was a lot less. <laughs> yeah. I should send Stedman a copy of prison house strong. <laughs> I feel bad. I mean, I, I feel bad, but not bad enough not to have fun with it. I really don't. Yeah. And that's the other thing. So girls are bored. That's the, that's the big problem with this too, is because like there's stimulation 24, seven, 365. And you think in with like the world's at her feet, she's still bored. And it is because girls don't really, they look at social media the same way that guys look at porn. It's like a quick dopamine hit, but it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. So as much as you say, I have to compete with everybody on her Tinder profile. It's like, no, you really don't. You need to compete with anybody who's face to face with her. And that's it. Everybody else is just nothing. Oh my God. My wife cheated on me. Really? How? She was texting a guy. Oh my God. Did she send him nudes? No, but they were sharing feelings. Fuck off. <laughs> really? So you mean to tell me some guy was willing to take on the emotional labor of listening to her cry and whine about how much of a dick you are and you're mad. It's like, dude. You just got yourself like a marriage au pair or some shit like that. Uh, I think you proved your point. 
No. Well, your point was it badly articulated. I'm not here to shit on you. That's not the point of this. The point of this is just the game is the same. The environment's different. God damn dust from the computer all over the microphone. All right. So you got uncharted territory and you just have to understand like a couple basic concepts. One, if you're hearing anything from somebody else that might help you, see how it jives with your current level of experience. If they're asking you, and this is, I didn't really mention this, but yeah, the bucket on your head. So if somebody's telling you this is a great life, blah, 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 is it working for them? Well, maybe you can give it some credit. And always make sure you're listening to multiple sources. The more, the better. Because it's going to be fuzzy, and the more people you have, the more granularity you're going to have. Like, I think, uh, you know what? I wasn't going to do this one, but it kind of fits. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, it was a nice post by whisper actually about lying you know what i'll put it up later it's a nice little list it comes up later on it's more so about it wasn't so much about like i'm telling you guys the positive side of things how to how to see things and know you can use them and then the flip side of that is how to how to filter bullshit better so it's kind of neat like every time there's something that has to do with the male condition you know what maybe I bet you I can find it. I bet you it's right here, too. Hey, ignore the peanut gallery. I found one that I got to read here. Oh, right. Flavor. American spelling. I keep forgetting you guys don't use the U. Distrust that particular... Oh, wait. He used the U. Wait, is Whisper Canadian? All right, there we go. And he was talking, and this is like one that was kind of tacks on to it about blue pills, right? Blue pills have a, a specific aftertaste. And yes, there's more than one blue pill. Blue pill is essentially what you think, uh, whatever the societal norms are, but non-beneficial ones. If it was beneficial, it'd be red pill. So it's like a very broad definition that way. And he's like, blue pills have an aftertaste. Learn to distrust that particular flavor. And this is the way you can tell, like, am I bullshitting you? Is Pat Stedman bullshitting you? Is Tate bullshitting you? Is Nick Redstar shitting on you? How do you know? Well, here's a couple, like, a nice little easy detection tools that you can use, and you can apply them to your life. Like, lies are told by people who want them believed. So, like, if somebody profits from a thing that you want to believe or learned it from somebody who profits from you believing the thing, like, it's not, it's not a guarantee. It's not true. It's kind of, but it's, it's definitely a red flag. And then you kind of put it all together. You know, truth, you can observe things that are true many times, but lies have to come from a person. So if you're telling somebody, you know, given, if somebody's out there giving advice about uh, how to give a happy life, a happy wife, all that shit, and they're saying it and they're saying it, but you've never seen that, there's probably a reason. It's not because there's a secret cabal of hidden relationship people that are living in the land of milk and honey while you're doing not. It's just that, like, if it was true, you'd be able to see it. Uh, lies, and this is a big one. Lies are told you to get to do something. This actually matters more for like you with women than anything. How do I know if they're lying? Well, does it involve a call to action? It's like, yeah, well, do you want it? Would you want to do that thing? I don't really want to do it, but I kind of have to because of blah, 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 blah. And you're like, well, maybe, and hear me out here. Maybe they're lying to you to get you to do what they want. Really? People do that? Oh, all the time, all the time. You wouldn't be. You would be surprised. You know, people get defensive about lies. So if they get mad when you don't believe them, there's probably a reason for that. Again, that's just a very easy manipulation technique. There's like five basic types of manipulation that people get used on them. There's there's shame, you know, shaming tactics. There's uh, anger. They get angry at you and hoping that you'll backpedal because you're risk averse or a conflict averse. There is uh, what I call frame shifting. It's like a hypnotic effect. You just use so many words. The other person just checks it. Like, you know what? Fuck, whatever. Sure. That kind of thing. Frame shifting. That's nefarious, man. That's nefarious. Uh, where'd I leave off? Oh, ego. Stroking your ego. Oh, somebody telling you how fucking awesome you are. Dude, it's the whammon's fault. You're goddamn great. Right there? Be very, very skeptical about somebody who's telling you everything you want to hear about yourself. 
girls know that you walk up to some girl, dude, those are the greatest tits ever. She's automatically like, pause, <laughs> pause. Anybody who's like this complimentary must want something. Um, I'm missing the one in there. Oh, wounding, wounding, wounding. Yeah, yeah. That's the other one where they tap into your, like your male protector instinct for a lot of girls. This is why girls do that victim Olympics thing, because when they start acting wounded or stupid or helpless, like that, the want of a guy to do something to help her, it's just huge. It works so well, especially guys that are dying to like show off their talents to their women. Anyways, uh, liars have the burden of evidence and want to shift it. So that's, so if, if they're trying to tell you something that's definitely hard to, hard to pick up on and they're making you tell them why, like, why, what's wrong with that? What's your problem with that? It's like, no, 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 no. I didn't come here with this information. You did. This is why when I do an episode of anything or write down something, I try to give you, like, obviously you can't give evidence. It's just stories. You can run that rabbit hole, which evidence is sufficient, but I do make the effort to show why these things are the way they are because i i would really regret if you guys came here and started being asked to tape leaps of faith into things very few times other than really mundane stuff it's like yeah relax she's just being chick trust me on this one it's like okay i, I can i can follow you over there we're not walking off the cliff uh liars don't like competition that's the other one this is and i and i get this is like a bad example, but it, I'm going to use it anyway, where everybody's like, oh, the red pill guys are just jerks. My stuff is great. A lot of that, a lot of that is really just because they don't like competition. And that's why you keep getting the whole red pill philosophy or red pilled ideology or the red pill this or the red pill. Like, no, there's no like red pill is not an adjective. Red pill is just a I would argue it's a container word, but it's better than a container word because it's defined. Actually, I guess which doesn't make it a container word. So it's a defined term. Male sexual strategy, positive male identity. Anything inside there is rule zero. And all of that is designed for the red pill for male sexual strategy. That's it. And so for a lot of, and that's the thing. So like, it's not that, oh no, we have our cannon and you have yours and we're going to fight like which God's better. It's like, no, no, no. If what you had was good, we would use it. <laughs> there's no, there's no canonical work. If, and this is the one thing I love when you see like the the guys who are desperate to have like a, a virginal housewife, you know, that trad conditional life or whatever, is they always think, oh, these guys just degenerate and want this. It's like, dude, do you really think everybody would be here talking about the red pill stuff that we do, the whaminate shit stuff, like all of this? Do you think we would be there if it was a way better life, if all you had to do was work hard, have a good job, deify your wife? retire her, let her be barefoot and pregnant in the house and pop out eight kids. Do you really think, do you really think that we wouldn't jump on that in a heartbeat if it worked? Of course we would. Who wouldn't? That is such an easy path. It's not, it's simple. It's easy. Yeah, there's work involved, but the rules are simple. The rules are clear. And all you have to do if things aren't going right is work harder and communicate. Of course, of course we would take it if it worked in a heartbeat. It doesn't work though. And part of this is that, uh, and there's a reason and this ties into like, why is he wearing all like the, why is he going for like the jungle look lately in the Hawaiian shirt? Like, that's why you guys ever see that meme, what people think nihilism means versus what nihilism means. And the ones like existential, it's like, oh, nothing ever matters. And then the other guy's sitting there. Hey, nothing matters. That's this case, man. It's my way of showing you guys. Like it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And that's okay. Well, if nothing has any meaning, then what's the meaning? Well, that's up to you. I don't know why it's so hard to articulate this to guys, but like the meaning in your life is completely subjective. You invent it. You make it up. You can change on a dime and that's okay. Well, I'm in charge of my life. Well, <laughs> reprehensible. It's like, ah, whatever. I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to sell you on being selfish. You narcissistic assholes. <laughs> like, come on. Anyways. Um, profitable things justify investment. Oh yeah. So if somebody's spending a lot of money to spread a story, be suspicious, they expect profit from it. And this is why like Mish and guys like that always bring up guys who are paying for subs and paying for views, like faking that they've looked like they're looking good. Like if you have to, if it's, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to sell it. It should sell itself. You know, 
Uh, people tend to believe what they want to truth, truth believe, but the universe is perverse. Yeah. Um, if everything is too, if everything is positive, there's no bad news. There's no trade-offs. There's no setbacks. I'd be skeptical of that too. The super positivity grifters always get me that way. It's like, oh, everything is positive. It's like, no, everything is not positive. Sometimes things suck. In fact, one of the hardest things I have to articulate to a guy when we're talking in Patreon or just on the live chats or elsewhere is um, like uh, a wife's cheating on him. They have three kids, family. Maybe she cheated on him back in like, you know, before they got married or something like that, right? Well, what do you do? You ask over the internet and they're all positivities. No, somebody wronged you and you should leave their ass. It's like, let me get this straight. Guy's got three kids, a house, a job. His wife's a stay-at-home wife and you want him because she cheated on him 10 years ago just to leave? Well, let me explain to you the 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 costs of putting your ego in there. Now, I'm not telling you what to do here, but yeah. She cheated on me 10 years ago. I'm fucking out of here. So, so sure, especially in like, I've seen guys have this conversation when the girl was pregnant, like later on. It's like, what are you going to do? Leave your pregnant wife? That's going to look good. So are you ready to lose all your friends? It's really hard to argue in front of a judge. Yeah, she doesn't deserve child support. She's a cheater. Judge looks at the pregnant chicks like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? Are you bro? Bro. And yes, judges say bro. They don't say bruv yet. We're still, we still got a, we still got a legal system that's worth having. And that sucks because like there's no good answers there. What's the answer? One, you learn to get past your wife cheating on you so long ago. Or you go get some revenge fucks, which in this case, you're totally in your wife's frame. Being completely reactive. Well, she cheated. Well, I'll cheat her. That, that'll that teach the bitch. Or you ditch her and lose all and lose everything. Lose a whole bunch of stuff. Lose access to your kids and all this stuff. You become the villains. Like so there's no right answers. And the only right answer for you is the one that you decide. What is more important to you? Is your family more important? Is your pride more important? Is your house and, and money more important? What's more important? Do you want to just check out and start, you know, ah, whatever. Open marriage my side now. And just go fucking sleep at the neighborhood. That's an option. You can do that too. What's the right answer there? There's no right answer. There's none. There's a series of bad answers. And you must pick amongst them the ones that give you the greatest satisfaction in your life. And that's it. And it's hard because like just to even say these things exist and then you watch guys are like, oh, you want this? You want a vasect? Like, it's not what I want. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what I want. If you want me to sit here and morally spout off what I think, that's great. But you're going to have a very boring life. I am not. I am not degenerate in any way. I wish I was. I really do. It looks like a lot of fun. I've had my fun. I do sleep around and or I did anyway. And all that stuff, but it's like, eh. At heart, I'm just, I would almost be a MGTOW. Except for, like, I just wanted to go my own way and do my own thing. I, I literally did what the title says, not what the whammon thing is. Anyways, enough of that. So, liars love language. And that's just it. Uh, this one was about they changing the words you use. So, if you're not allowed to, you know, you gotta... I remember Stedman did this one. It was fucking weird. If you can't sit here unequivocally without reservation, tell me that you love women, then it was some negative statement. I don't remember what it was, but yeah, that was it. It's like, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me I'm not allowed to have any negative opinions on like, look, I like women, you know, depending on the one. Some are good. Casey Anthony, not so good. Uh, the Clinton chick, not bad. JLo used to be good. Now kind of in the middle, whatever. Uh, the Zenyatta, yeah, mid, seems pleasant enough. Whatever. My girl thinks she's great. But uh, if you're like going to make, like, no, you cannot have these opinions. You cannot use this language to talk about it. Then you just realize they're just trying to change how you think. When they change how you can speak, they change the words you can formulate. And so you just always got to be careful about that stuff. And that's why I love, like, watching turf and trans people. If you guys don't know, that's trans exclusionary radical. So feminists are mad now because trans chicks are basically feminist too. And it reflects like, oh my God, am I this shitty? It's like, no, get out of my bathroom. It's a fun fight to watch. But yeah, that's what, that's where you can watch language policing happen. Anyways, uh, liars rely on reverence. This one, I love this one. You ever notice how you guys keep calling me like, why do they keep calling you couch? Why do they keep calling Rolo the godfather of the Manosphere? And everybody makes fun of him for that and that. It's like, you guys don't understand. Like, these are, it's basically a mocking term to show you not to take this seriously. Why do they call you couch? Because one time, 
three years ago on a fucking live stream and went on a rant about, I think coaches are ridiculous. Online coaches are the stupidest people ever. They can't be held accountable. They're not good at the job. And most of the time it's just there to pretend they have an authority they don't have. And so since then, everybody started calling me couch. <laughs> He's not a coach. He's a couch. I'm like, fuck you. And Rolo, some, somebody was actually, I think the first guy to call him the godfather of the manosphere was to make fun of him. Look at this guy thinks he's the godfather or some shit. And then it just kind of, everybody's like, yeah, the godfather, it sticks. But just remember when you hear that stuff, it's not trying to get reverence at all. It's making fun of those guys that need it. Like hence, Mr. President of the Manosphere. Like that's an attempt at reverence or what are some other good, do you guys have any other good examples? I can't think. Um, oh, the Sneeko one I made fun of where he's sitting there in a, in a, in a mosque wearing his robe, doing the, uh, the Illuminati hands. Talking about being the divine or some shit like that. And I made fun of that one. It's like, I can stand in a church too. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, they're trying to get reverence. They're trying to get you to think of them as like a status. But it's all fake. It's all fake. It's spinners on your wheels, man. Rich people don't put spinners on their rims. Yeah, well, poor people who want to think you're rich do. Who falls for that? Poor people. Are you saying I'm poor? Sexually, maybe. If you're falling for it. <laughs> And then the last one, liars make compound assertions. Be suspicious of somebody who does not want to let you pick and choose what to believe from the story. So yeah, if they want you to buy in all the way, that was the other thing. Like, oh, you have to buy all of this. The whole Christian thing, the longhouse, buy it 100%. Now, man, it's another reason I kind of like Red Pill, where you can tell everybody's staying on points. Like, look, it's a toolbox. You don't have to use things. Most of this stuff is if you want a certain type of outcome. If you want to get laid more, is a different set of skills and strategies than if you want a healthy and long-term relationship. Different set of skills than if you want to get through a divorce properly. And the kind of things you have to use to be attractive when you're not good looking versus when you are good looking completely change too. The things you use in a marriage when you're running dread versus after you don't need dread anymore, different skills. So it's all just tools and you don't have to buy into all of it. You don't have to believe any of it. In fact, if you don't find any of it useful, don't use any of it. It's fine. It'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. And so, yeah, so when you're in uncharted territory in the sexual marketplace, like you are now, whether you're single, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether, you know, God forbid, widowed, whatever, you got to realize anybody who's younger than you has no experience and doesn't know what they're doing. Anybody older than you doesn't have any idea about the new technology or the new environments or the things that have changed. And so their experience is limited at best. And the people that are the same as you are just guessing. And so you really, there's a couple tools you can use there to kind of help yourself. And this isn't even me giving you the tools. This is the tools that help you get your own tools. So then you don't even need me. Uh, all right. So we're going to move on to anger after this one. But before then, let's, uh, oh, what the hey. Boom. What's up, fam? Got some big news to share that unfortunately is not so good. So I'm going to jump right into to it. You're gonna watch this video and you're gonna cry. At least we can laugh at your ass as you cry like in, in the corner like a little f***ing girl in the fetal position. <laughs> the best part is that guy was like 100% sincere. 100% sincere. Oh, anyways, um, anger. So the point of anger is, I think Rolo says it, where anger is like fire. It's a tool, but it'll also burn you. Anger is kind of the same way. Anger has a mix. It's uh, it's the only social emotion that men have, as far as I know. It might be the only social emotion out there. And what do we, what's a social emotion? Well, turns out uh, a social emotion means it requires a pain. Usually like a pain type stimulus is all you need for emotions, but it also requires um, deliberate. To be, it has to be deliberate. So in other words, if you stub your toe, you're not, you're, you're not angry. You're hurt, but you're not angry. But if somebody steps on your foot, now you're angry because they did that on purpose. They did that to hurt you. And then anger is a social signal that guys send saying, you need to stop what you're doing or start doing what you're supposed to be doing or I'm going to escalate to violence. It's our very, very clear and direct communication. And girls don't have anger the same way. Girls know how to be exasperated. Girls know how to be desperate. Girls know how to be insane, but they don't know how to be angry. So for most guys, you're not ready for angry, not until you really are. And that's, that was one of the, the sub stacks there. And it depends. I talk about 
the uh, type one, type two, and type three dysfunctional captains, which is a model that we use in the married red pill for the three basic types of failing and failed relationships. And the first one, drunken captain with a uh, begrudging first officer. First officer in this case is being the wife. The idea is as a guy, you were her hypergamous best option, but you know, you slacked, you got fat, you got lazy, you know, you stopped working, you stopped caring, you picked up a drinking problem, and then she's had to be forced to take up the mantle as head of the household, begrudgingly builds up a lot of resentment. Type two is the neurotic captain with a constantly complaining passenger. And this is usually when you get uh, type two and type one personalities like borderline meaning with a codependent or a narcissist with a codependent, that kind of thing. The idea there is nothing the guy ever does is good enough. The girl is constantly complaining. She puts him in double binds all the time as like a, as a salve for her psychological hangups. And then the worst part about those ones is they sometimes have good sex because they have like blowout level fights or horrible emotional turmoil. And then after that, good sex comes afterwards. So for a lot of those guys, they just think of relationships like, dude, the juice is not worth the squeeze. This is so much work. Like, it's great. We have a good sex life. But does she have to be so fucking crazy? You know, walking on eggshells, sleeping on a bed of nails, whichever reference you want to use. It's all there. Um, the type three is the captain and her husband. And that's for girls that never really wanted a good strong man. They wanted a floor mat. And there's all kinds of reasons for that. It could be um, like somebody in my family has this one where their dad was kind of uh, abusive. And so they wanted a floor mat guy that they could kind of abuse to like not lose that power again. Sometimes there's girls that have latched on 100% to feminism, boss bitch stuff. But yeah, usually there's some reason for it. The problem is that women aren't as hyper competent as you'd think. I, I know. I thought she could take down a 200 pound Russian with a weird flip kick. Yeah, they usually can. But this time, you know, not so much. But the problem is like those kind of girls are usually too proud to admit that they would need help, that they would like a man to run these things, that they would love to take that emotional stress off of them. And so you get this weird budding heads thing. And a lot of guys that aren't super confident, a little insecure, absolutely drawn to a confident woman like that absolutely but that's the problem is that everybody know nobody's happy and everybody knows they're not happy but everybody's too proud to do anything about it and all these guys get to anger in the same way i mean previously they get to anger because they run out of the tools that they can use to manage their relationships or their sex lives or any of it anger is the way of showing you i have no other ways to address this situation it's my ultimatum threat of violence that's it and there is no greater loss of frame than having to resort to violence we're a social species if you have to use violence it means you're out of tools it means that's it that's the limit of my capabilities as a man to handle this situation what if you're getting mugged shut up shut up <laughs> and I remember seeing, like, a lot of us saw it as kids. And this is kind of why we don't use it now. Which, I mean, it's, it's good and bad. It's got, it's like everything. There's just trade-offs. Like, my stepdad was angry. Always angry. All the time. They used to have huge shouting matches. He and my mom. And I remember, like, there was, like, five of us. Like, the kids. And we would all sit at the bottom of the stairs in the basement and, like, hang out. We'd, like, have, like, a impromptu meeting every time they were having fights upstairs. It was a very... At the time, it was like, ah, it's kind of neat. We get to hang out and talk, but like thinking back on it, I'm like, that's pretty fucking horrific. And then like the one big blowout one, uh, I, I went after him and he went after me for a bit there. And then we became buddies after that. It turns out you're not a man until you fight your old man. Nobody told me this until I was in the fight. So whatever. Um, Where was I going with this one? Oh, yeah. So then I kind of realized, like he's telling me the story about how his old man was beating his mom, beating him, and they put him in the hospital. I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, I get it now. Like, what the fuck else was he going to do? He had no tools. Nobody helped him. Nobody taught him how to handle any of this shit. So naturally, when things got tough and... What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to yell and scream and fucking bang the desk. And I realized that a lot of these guys that you think of just abusive assholes, they were just never taught. They, did, they don't know. Now, there's some guys that are absolutely horrific, but a lot of them just don't have a better way to deal with things. This is one of those reasons I tell you before, this is off topic, but... For a lot of guys, once they take the red pill and kind of do their things, they fix their relationship with their parents because they realize they're just faulted people. It's like, oh, really? Nobody told you anything, did they? <laughs> no, not really. All right, fair enough. And so as a guy, a lot of it is you become a promise keeper. 
Promise Keeper is where you see how your dad treats your mom. And because, you know, dad's working all day and mom's at home taking care of the kids. She's your only parental guidance. And so your childhood, um, att like your childhood psyche attaches onto her as your sole source of survival. And of course, women have different parenting strategies. I don't want to get into the weeds on this one. But the point is, you kind of become mama's boys. And then when you see this man treating her badly, you're like, when I grow up, I am never going to treat a woman like that. My dad treated my mom. I'm going to be better than him. Wait, guys have daddy issues? Oh, yes, guys have daddy issues. Here's the problem. Yes, the yelling at the chick because she burnt the biscuits, probably not the best strategy. I'm calling it out. I'm put, going on a limb here. Put that bucket on your head. I think it's okay. Um, but you got to remember, like, there's something your dad did. Gave your mom three kids. She stuck around for all that stuff. Stayed married for 20 years, 30 years, whatever. However long they did. And you're like, you kind of realize like, well, maybe there's something to this that works. And there is. Some women just like, you know, abusive-ish men. Some women just like the, the aloof, like all the things that come with guys who are angry. The anger issues, the aloofness, the, the, uh, the physicality, all that stuff. It's all attractive. And so when you throw it all away, you throw away the good and the bad. And so this is where a lot of guys that come from these homes and the dad's like, I don't get it. My guy can't pick up women at all. And you're just like, well, it's because it's he's rejecting you as his, as his father figure. Yeah. So you kind of have to come to terms with like, okay, you, and this is where you have to accept like, okay, my mom is still a chick. You know, your mom is still a chick. Everybody's mom is still a chick. They were attracted to what they were attracted to. And other women are attracted to very similar things. So, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to throw hands on any girl when you like her in order to keep her around. But you do have to be aware that like the ability to throw hands is an attractive part of things. So, you don't have to adapt. How do I adapt this for maximum happiness? And then you find a nice little thing. And again, you kind of come to terms. Your parents are just people, whatever. Anyway, so once you got all this done, you realize uh, you don't have to be angry anymore. You got better amounts of tools. You've learned, okay, I know what to use for fogging, agree and amplify, amuse mastery, negative inquiry, negative assertion. If you guys don't know what these tools are, the sidebar series is on the playlist. Go get the books that I'm talking about in there and then go through them chapter by chapter with the videos because it'll provide a lot of extra context for you. It'll save you years on your red pill journey. Years. I got to finish that series anyway. Uh, where was I going with this one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like those kind of tools you have, you know, being aloof, you have manufactured outrage, you have the gym bag routine. There's I can literally rifle off probably a hundred different mental models and tools and strategies that I have only uh, I've given you alone. And there's more out there. If you want to start taking a deep dive into the red pill, you'll absolutely find them and be fascinated. Stop spouting the or stop spouting the rules and play the game. How to get laid like a warlord, like uh, hundreds of them. Every unhappy wife is a great victim. You know what I mean? And so you get all this stuff out of the way and you find out you just don't need to be angry. A lot of it is expectations too. Once you stop expecting so much from women, they stop pissing you off. And this is something I love too about this where you like you treat you stop treating women like like men and then they stop disappointing you when you find out they don't have a dick. You're like, oh, wow. I can't believe she stood you up. Yeah, chicks, what are you going to do? If it was a guy and he stood you up, that fucking idiot. But it's a girl. You're like, of course she's going to stand me up. She's a 23-year-old. She doesn't even... <laughs> she forgets to take her birth control. How crazy is that? <laughs> so the anger goes away for the most part. But here's the problem. Is that... And I know this sounds weird, but sometimes girls want anger. I don't really know why. I don't really care why. Um, sometimes anger is a tool you can use. And this is where like a the Substack went into it and the book will go into it. Anger no longer becomes an emotional response, a social emotion. Anger becomes a tool just like any others. Well, when is it good to get angry and when is it not good to get angry? And I'm not going to give you a shopping list now because it's one of those things that you just have to like, once you're there, you'll know. And the whole point with anger, and I think, uh, one more please started this one. It's like, stop tolerating bullshit start showing controlled anger and the idea here is that you have anger but you're uncontrol of it and that makes sense since you're in control of it you can escalate it 
and de-escalate it as you need. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So how's he talking about? Well, it's it's the same as the um, escalation of force. You guys know this one? Or the continuum of force? That's where there are certain levels like officer presence, open hand restraint, closed hand restraint, uh, non-lethal force, lethal force. It's a whole escalation of things that happened based on what the criminal is doing when you want to apprehend a suspect or you know whatever you're doing. Military guys learn it too. And you're always supposed to use, now argue some people say always use one level of force above or use equal levels of force and then, you know, turn it off when the guy de-escalates. But that's the point is that it's deliberate, it's systematic. And as long as it's systematic, the other person can, uh, the other person can adapt to it. So if they start acting better, then you stop using force. And the same model here goes with controlled anger. So let's say your girl is just completely out of her fucking mind, losing her mind, yelling and screaming and throwing plates and shit like that. And then you're just sitting there cowering. You're like, oh, I don't want to get angry. And you're just walking on eggshells, right? I mean, most girls don't, but some girls do. Or they're just flying off the handle, you know, whatever. And sometimes it's just a matter of getting angry. So just take just a simple 10 scale. It doesn't even have to be a useful 10 scale. Just a normal 10 scale. <laughs> Stop telling bullshit. Stop drinking White Claw's weight. So if your girl starts having like a 2 out of 10 temper tantrum, then you have 3 out of 10 controlled anger. Are you sure you want to do this? Do you really want to have this fight? Like, we can have this fight. You're not going to like it. So I'd rather we just not have this fight. Yeah, it's a 3 out of 10. Ah, oh, she's not falling for it. She starts escalating. It's 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10. So you come out with a 6 out of 10. Start using your big boy voice. Start raising your voice. All right, enough of this shit. I'm done. Sit the fuck down. I'm fucking out of here. She keeps going. She keeps going. She goes to eight. Here's the thing. The reason that it's controlled anger is good as a male strategy is because she can't win. Like she just can't anger at its peak will always end up with violence. Always. She's never going to beat you in a fight ever. So it's always, it's always a frustrating fight. Now here's the, here's the thing that's different when just like, Oh, just losing your shit. She'll calm the fuck down. It's like, no it's controlled. So before it gets to that 10 out of 10 throwing down, throwing hands, she's had three, four, five different engagements with you. Each one, you're responding with more and more anger than she has. So she realizes it's a losing fight. It's a subconscious thing. It's a way of driving somebody. It's driving somebody to the place you want to be. And then she realizes it's like, it's not going to happen. Like this fight just cannot happen. And more often than not, you'll get to a point where uh, they stop getting angry at you and they finally start expressing whatever feeling it is that got them to this point. I've seen it all the time in mine where it's the girl's micking at me. She's micking at me and I fucking really want to do this. And then all right, let's fucking do this. You wanted to yell? Stop yelling. Give me a good reason. <laughs> and then you find out, oh, I was just talking with my mother and this or, you know, some example. And you find out it's nothing to do with you. None of this has anything to do with you. You're literally having to. Do you remember? Um. What was this? I was trying to remember the movie, but it's the one where the car is going too fast. So the other car goes faster, gets in front of it, attaches the bumpers and then slows them both down. It's the idea is like, it's actually like a leadership thing. You're guiding, you're guiding your woman to put on her big girl, big girl panties and talk like a human being. But when she's emotionally in that cycle, it's hard for her to see that exit, that exit to what I call the hamster maze. Well, Jack 10 calls it, but I'm calling it now. Jack's gone. The exit to the hamster maze. And so when you want to get that exit, sometimes, yeah. Match your level, bring it down. I thought I wasn't in control. I wasn't responsible for my solutions. You're not. You're responsible for your outcome. There's always es like there's always the escalate of uh like just a boundary enforcement. If the anchor gets too much that you don't want to handle, there's nothing stopping you from just treating it like a boundary. Your attention, your affection, your commitment. If it's a chick you've been dating for three months. All right, this one's over way too early in this relationship for a fight. And this is only going to get worse later. Demoter to plate. All right, I'll fuck you, but I'm not hanging out anymore. Um, just leave the house. She's yelling at the kids again. Well, what are you going to do? I'll take the kids. We're going to go for ice cream. Your mom needs a minute. She's kind of gone a bit crazy. We'll be right back. Nobody likes being excluded from the cool kids club. So, yeah. So it's control anger. And the best part about this is there's no trigger you're not predictable and this is something to be careful of so if you get mad very specific triggers every time she brings up your mother-in-law every time she brings up i don't know your, your 
your weight or whatever, as long as you got specific triggers, then you'll always be manipulatable. If you're ever having a conversation and she feels bad and she feels guilty and she wants to flip the script around, she'll tap into your triggers. Absolutely. You get mad. Oh, he's so mad at me. You're such a prick. Oh, I fell for it again. Yeah, you don't have triggers. She's like, I can't trigger this. The only way I, the only thing I can do is start losing my shit and then he will lose his shit to bring me down. And so it's not, it makes you harder to manipulate, which is good. Because if you're going to be manipulated, you want it to be for things that you want. Oh, she wants me to go to Pier 1 and she gave me a blowjob beforehand. Well, you know. How badly do you not want to go to Pier 1? Maybe the blowjob is like, you know what, I can accept that. Having said that, if you want to go to Pottery Barn, it's going to be anal. <laughs> Fuck Pottery Barn. Fuck the Pottery Barn. All right. Uh, I've got all week. Pull the meat. Money, energy, attention, time. Yeah. I mean, use whatever acronym you want. It doesn't really matter. So let's have some fun here. Oh, that's the wrong one. You want to tell me why the majority of people that voted yes, I can be submissive are men? Just want to talk a little bit about why I love women. And the majority that said no are women? I would love y'all to ponder that for a fucking second. I love how they always make sure, by and large, they shower. The feminine energy that that girls put out, it's just, it's magnetic. You think I can be submissive? I adore it. <laughs> Dark Knight Dev gave me one heartfelt fuck you of a super chat. Thank you very much, sir. Heartfelt, Sydney Watson, fuck you. God damn it, Dev. Ryan, you better make more dollars or she's going to find another guy to take her to Ruth Chris. The hell is Ruth Chris? Give me hypergamy or give me death. Ian Ironwood, what a hack. I'm confused about this statement. I don't know what Ruth Chris is. Is that some kind of festival? Somebody, can anybody translate this? Pottery Barn? I know, it's just like one of those knickknack stores that chicks buy. Oh, it's a steakhouse? <laughs> yeah, you better. You better make that money. If you can't spend money on her... That's a weird thing, by the way. I think that's like a black American situation where girls are like automatically. It's almost like prostitution, but it's like pay up front. Sex is maybe. I don't know, man. America's weird. It is. Case in point. Actually, Dev, you got me thinking. So I was in the, the liquor store yesterday and I, there was a black guy in there. And um, the security is walking around doing his thing. And all of a sudden, the guy starts going up to the security. I was like, what the fuck are you looking at? And I was like, what the hell is he doing? What are you looking at? And the guy's like, he's an East Indian guy. She's so like, you know, sir, sir, relax, relax. I'm from America, yo. You can't, don't, don't look me in the eye. And he was like really mad at this guy for looking at him in, too long. And then he looked him in the eye. And I'm like, dude, this isn't my fight. But I was just like, man, you're in Canada now. Relax. <laughs> like, you're, you're safe here. It's fine. But then he gave this guy shit. And it's like, I'm America, and here, you don't do that shit. It's like, what is this about, like, if you stared with eye contact in a liquor store too long? Was it that he was a security guard? Thought he was stealing liquor or something? I don't know. But then there was this other Jamaican security guard, and he walked over to that guy, and he starts telling the story again. Yeah, and I told him not to look at me. And like, he, right? And he goes, I guess he was trying to look like, I'm, I'm in the right here, right? Like, you don't, you don't look a man in the eye, right? And I was just thinking about this. I'm like, oh, fuck. I bet you, I swear to God, if this guy ends up pulling, like, a TikTok world star scene in here... And I got to end up being held up by the cops. I just wanted to get a Sapporo. <laughs> I don't need this shit. Yeah. Oh, I was making fun of the Asian girl who roasts the red pill. Oh, now I got it. Now I got it. <laughs> yeah, that Angela, Angela Knight or whatever. Dude, she's such. I don't, I don't mean like whatever. I'm sure she's a wonderful person. But like her online thing is such trash. <laughs> it's like, dude, you got a criminal record. Maybe slow down on the whole moral finger wagging. It's like, I don't know, man. Why does everybody in fucking jail? What was it for? Stealing? Theft? I don't know. Uh, seriously, a liquor store? You guys must really love beer. Yeah, well, I mean, for in Ontario, they're called LCBO. Liquor uh, something. Liquor Commercial Board of Ontario or something. So if you want to buy anything other than, like, beer and wine, you can still get in, like, grocery stores and that. But for hard liquor, you have to go to there. It just so happens there's one by my house. So I'm like, it's easier. But yeah, security. Well, yeah, and keep in mind, like I live in the entertainment district in my town, right? So if there's going to be some shit popping off at a liquor store, that's the one that's going to be a whole bunch of dudes calling each other bro posturing. They're like, yeah, whatever. 
Okay, so it's a restaurant. Uh, sounds like prison behavior, maybe. But that's the thing. It's like, I, and I, it happens a lot. I and like not a lot, a lot, but a lot enough. Is that you get because every time there's a game, you'll get all of a sudden New Jersey plates and New York plates and a lot of uh, clearly American black guys here, not Canadian ones, because Canadian black guys are basically Jamaicans. We 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 have a lot of like we bring them in from abroad. The states you have your own. But yeah, a lot of the guys coming here bringing that attitude, and a lot of the time you just kind of talk to them like normal people, and you're like, like I've seen it where you just kind of get them, they get their guard down. I'm like, hey, relax, put your guard down. It's fine. It's Canada. Nobody gives a shit. Like it's cool. The Underground Railroad. I I don't say that because that'll set people off. But like the Underground Railroad came to here. Like you're good. <laughs> you're good. Yeah. Uh, who are these random chicks that just pop up out of nowhere and spout off on podcasts? Louis, I don't know. I really wish I did. And that's the worst part is because like I'll poke fun maybe once or twice and then kind of block because I don't really need that crap in my life. And I'm finding that like even if you don't like even if you have your thing, I've got my thing. If I listen to them too much, it starts to influence the way I want to do content. I really don't want that because it's like young, stupid people with young, stupid opinions has no place in here. Not because they're young, because they're inexperienced. It was a black guy. Was Trudeau. <laughs> bam right in the black face anyways back to back to the topic here let's switch this around let's do it so i used to be a pretty strong feminist i've actually become a feminist again Ooh. feminists though can be some of the worst people you'll ever meet they can be like some of the most nasty they'll take advantage of uh contradictory uh world values right worldview which is that like i'm talking about like psychology and mental health for men and yet yeah. i'm in a field that like is overly feminized and shoving drugs down men's throat and i'm like and i'm yeah. still recommending it because i don't want to lose like the baby out with the bathwater. just because not all therapists are well trained to work with men just because a lot of therapists might even be biased against particularly like incel type men if they hear misogynistic language at all they might like shut yeah. you down so and, and it was just difficult because i didn't want to be like super like nasty and mean or anything <laughs> I could watch these things all goddamn day, man. They actually do entertain me. Who would have thought that relationship podcasts talking shit about me and MLG gaming with infomercial music was like the thing. But that's the thing. So what am I talking about now? Now it's communication. Shut the F up until you don't have to. Yo, uh, YDKI, 5 euro 99 cent super chat are all trad cons blue pill. Surely some of them know better. Jordan Peterson talks about dark triad and hypergamy and then preaches marriage and kids. Um, I think it's like right there. You kind of got a little bit of like a mudding of the waters of definitions. Simply put, if you want to talk about what the difference is between blue pill and red pill is blue pill is sexual strategy that doesn't work. And red pill is sexual strategy that does work. That's it. Like there's no us versus them if there's something about uh marriage and kids like because there's nothing that says you can't get married and have kids and be red pilled it's not and clary and i have argued about this to the end of the day but it's like she says don't get married the red pill thing is everybody says this. red pill says don't get married first off red pill's not a person red pill doesn't say shit but when you look through the information in the red pill when you look through the mental models what it says is very specific marriage is a bad deal for men yeah, blue pill guys get laid too. Actually, uh, oh, do you really want to get me into this? All right, wine more please has a good point. So yes, blue pill guys do get laid too. Sometimes it's because they just don't get laid as much because they're you know you know you have to get in a relationship first to do it. Sometimes it's just chads that don't really care and they can you know be woke or whatever and get through there. Yes. So generally speaking, I guess red pill would be a deliberate sexual strategy that works as opposed to an accidental strategy that works. But I'm not gonna. This is one of those points that like I would love to have like a, if somebody actually wanted to debate about this kind of stuff, I would love it. It's one of those weak spots that hasn't really been like fully fleshed out yet. And it'd be a lot of fun, but nobody does that because that would involve reading. But I mean, just for the sake of it, let's just keep that broad one. But anyways, if it works, it's red pill. Uh, but yeah, nothing saying don't get married either. It's marriage is a bad deal for men. There's a lot of things. Drinking is bad for men. Doesn't mean red pill says don't drink. No, not at all. Not at all. Get drunk if you want to. It's fine. Just understand the consequences. Maybe a topic for your fourth book. Yeah. Debate the book. Yeah. No, no, no. I think I might switch to fiction after this. Uh, fuck words. Yeah. God damn it. Why am please? You killed my whole flow with that like very poignant Wait. <laughs> God damn it. 
Anyways, uh, communication. Da -da. Finally made it to a live show. Kind of late, but oh well. Don't worry about it. All right, so communication. It is... The problem with communication is why guys are communicating. So when you are first coming to the red pill and guys tell you to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up becomes your mantra. Not because shut the fuck is good. It's not good, actually. It's a holding. It's a holding pattern. It's if, if anything you say always makes things worse for you, then shut the fuck up. You'll never win whatever this interaction is, but you'll never lose. It's just kind of like a, we're not having this conversation. It's a, it's a stall. And it lets you know, okay, there's a spot that's weak. When I got, you know, my wife's yelling at me or when I got this girl shit testing me, I don't know how to respond. So don't respond. Don't respond because anything you say is going to be stupid. Well, what is it the kind of things that guys say that are stupid? Well, a lot of things guys say are stupid is because they want to be validated. They want to be heard. 99.9% .9 of fights that guys get into in relationships, in singledom, even online, is because they think that the issue here is that the girl they're talking to doesn't have all the information. And if I explain to her my perspective, if I explain to her what I thought, if I explain to her my motivations, then she would understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. She'll stop arguing with me and we'll have a problem-free life. And right there, you guys already know where I'm going with this one. It does not work. It doesn't work. Because men and women are fundamentally communicating on different wavelengths. Women are arguing about the emotional side. They pick, if you want to take like the rules of rhetoric, that's ethos, pathos, and logos. Ethos is status. Pathos is the feelings attached to rhetoric. And logos is the appearance of logic. Women pick ethos. Who's the status? Defer to him. Women then go into pathos, the emotionality of an argument. Is this, is this make me feel good? And then logos. Guys, on the other hand... Still kind of do ethos, but they do logos. All right, so logical. You have to understand my position, then you'll get it. And then the pathos comes afterwards. So you have pathos versus logos. Never really works. Like, I think that's how I wrote it. It's how I quoted it. It's like, if she only knew my perspective, she wouldn't be acting this way. And it's like, just stop. You're seeking her validation. And here's, here's the worst part about that. When you're seeking her validation, there's a part of a girl subconsciously that kind of knows that. Because they've been through this argument 500 times with 500 different dudes. These guys are all repetitively, repetitively normal. And she kind of knows subconsciously, in order to get what I want, I just have to withhold the validation. And then he will buckle because he wants something from me. And I don't want anything from him. And it's not that she's a bad person. It's like, wouldn't you? Dude, if all you had to do was not validate somebody who was begging you to give it to him. And then he would buy you shit. Wouldn't you? Of course you would. You'd be stupid not to. You'd be stupid not to. And on top of that, it's not even it's not even what you're saying, but it's how you're saying it. Oh, is that like that? The tone, not that the content? Kind of is. Not in the way girls mean it, though. Like, uh, like wine more, please. He had it on his sub stack. He, he, if he's able to put a link on here, go check it out. Where he was mentioning 55% of what you say, like what people are understanding what you're talking to about, 55% of it is body language and I, I might get the numbers slightly wrong but I got the broad strokes and something like 25% of it is the tone of your voice and something like like 15% is actually the words you're using which also kind of throws it off where you'll see a guy give a field report about how he was explaining something to his wife or he was saying something to his wife he was establishing a boundary and the wife was having none of it but then you kind of realize as you're reading a thing, like, dude, he sounds so nervous. Like, imagine sitting there. You can't talk to me that way, but you're like shaking like a chihuahua. Does that really sound like a man who's in control? Not really. Even though you're using all the right words, maybe your tone is good. Maybe it's not. Maybe, you're, maybe your voice is cracking, whatever. But if you're sitting there, you can't even have like a dominant position in the conversation. Of course, it's going to go shitty. Of course it is. Trembling hands, squeaky voice. There's hundreds of tells. And this is the worst part. You could practice power alpha posturing all day you could practice um how do i how do i use my big boy voice i gotta lower three octaves i gotta use small words i gotta speak slow move my hands softly stand with your shoulders back you can do all this shit and then you're gonna still find out it doesn't matter because there's like a hundred small little tells that your body language gives off that you don't even know and that she doesn't even know but instinctively we just kind of understand it rodrigo 
Uh, Guinea. Thank you for 129 sex, sir. No comment attached to it, which sucks, but thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Yeah, love me some eye contact. <laughs> and this is why a lot of like the the generic like when people are like advice versus prescription like prescriptions versus uh the fuck does Rolo say? I don't offer prescriptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason is because like a lot of guys when they give advice, they just tackle onto the words. That 15%. Oh bro, just walk up and say hello. It's like, how does that help? You basically gave him 15% of the answer. All right, when you walk up, don't have your voice crack, stand in good posture, don't be nervous, don't have any nervous hand pause signaling, and don't look like a creeper. Well, I can't tell you that. Why? Because I don't know what those things mean. Of course you don't. But you don't do any of them. Why? Because you know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, just be yourself. Exactly. Just be yourself is I can't explain it. Just let magic solve it. It's like, dude. Uh, men underestimated how important body language is. Yeah, of course they did. I mean, not all men, just the ones that are having trouble. MLD equals don't talk to me like that. See, I never liked that statement. It's just like it's direct. It's not bad. The problem is it's like an ultimatum. This doesn't work. Like, here's the thing. Instead of saying don't talk to me like that. Why not just do whatever the or else was? Because there is an or else attached to that. You may not hear it, but there's there at the end of don't talk to me like that. That's what women hear or else. That's what everybody hears or else. All right. Or else what? Or else I'm fucking out of here. Then just leave, bro. Why do you got to Why do you got to do this? Because you want because a lot of guys want it as an opportunity. And I don't whether they know they want it or not. It's an opportunity to establish dominance, but it's a very contrived dominance. So if she can't talk to you that way, just fucking be elsewhere. I'm out of here. Okay. Yeah? How dare you? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Where are you going? Out? <laughs> when are you coming back? I don't know. Later. Doesn't that sound much better? Then you can't talk to me that way. That's just inviting more talk. That's the thing, too. For a lot of these arguments and communications, the guy starts expressing his points. Or saying his piece. And all it does is it opens up more conversation. Is that the real purpose of this? Like, do you want to just... I want to argue, but I want to win. It's like, I don't want to argue. I want you to shut up. In fact, I can't get you to shut up. So I just want to be where I don't have to hear it. So here we go. Uh, AK, $19.99 super chat. Oh, bro. Thank you. You keep the penny and I keep the heartfelt out of my mouth. I'm loving it. Spent all week arguing with people on Twitter and yelling at women. Told my mom, hypergamy doesn't care. Am I doing this red pill thing right, Couch? Absolutely, dude. Remember, if your mom ever gives you shit, just throw the spaghetti at her. <laughs> Jesus, you guys are insufferable. God damn it. Yeah, remember, if you're yelling at women on Twitter, you, you better be doing it to build an audience. Like When I'm yelling at women on Twitter... It's usually to entertain you guys. I don't really have any ill will towards the girls. I don't really care. And then Carl Bennington, $5 super chat. That's one heartfelt cuck article that I don't want to talk about. Fuck you. Heartfelt, Carl. I throw paper at women to get a reaction. They silently, they silently pick it up and throw it up. What does it mean? What the fuck? Why are you throwing paper at women? Where are you that you're doing this? I don't know what you mean by they pick it up and throw it up. Yeah, actually, I, I, I'm asking you, what does that mean? Um, if you're teasing, that's one thing. Like, teasing's not bad. Obviously, you want to do teasing. Um, I would probably go with something other than throwing paper. I'm assuming you're in high school then or in college. Usually, it's better to do just something like a, a snide backhand or a, a backhanded compliment, but playful one. But, I don't know. Maybe you added some information here so I can see underneath. Carl, because I don't know what you mean by if they throw it up. Are they eating the paper? Yeah. So Carl, throw it in the chat. If you can, if you can, um, you don't have to super chat it. Just say, just amplify it somewhat. Cause I don't know what that means. And then Chris is not here. $5, a one heartfelt super chat. You are criminally underrated. Ryan heartfelt, heartfelt to you, Sue. You too, sir. <laughs> Fuck you. Heartfelt. I think the trolls in the English as a second language are coming out. Ah, it's fine. 
Can't expect everybody here to be awesome. Uh, Hell, actually catching another live. Good morning. Morning to you too. Meta troll. Maybe. I don't know, Carl. Like, thanks for the super chat. I really just don't understand what, what you're trying to say. Anyway, so back to communication. And in the same way that anger only works when you're when you're able to control it, so does communication. It only works when you have congruence. So like if you're telling a woman to cut that out and you can't and you don't believe it, like you don't have the body language to go with it, you don't have the tone of voice to go with it, and you can't fake it. You have to really be sick of a girl's shit to say, I'm sick of your shit. You can't be like, oh, if I say this, she'll leave me alone. Cause like, th and the worst part is if you're the guy who's buckled all this time anyway, even if you do have the body language in place, she's still going to call it as a bluff. Cause the last hundred times, like a lot of husbands see this where I don't get it, man. I've got my shit together now. I hold frame and blah, blah, blah. Why is she worse? It's like, of course she's worse. The last five years, you've done nothing but buckle to every emotional tantrum she's had. And now all of a sudden that you've stopped, she's not taking that as a sign that she needs to change. She's taking it as a sign that she needs to do more, more temper tantrums to get you to buckle. Trolling trolls is a talent. I don't know if that's the way to look at it. I, at this point, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in my uh, teaching mode right now. So I don't, I'm not really paying too much attention to the trolls. I try to give all you guys like a sincerity on these conversations. I got a lesson plan here. I'm trying to stick to the schedule. You can't buy frame unless it's written by me. Yeah. And then here, one more is in the chat too with communication. It's pretty amazing how many guys write from a third party perspective being internally focused. Oh, it was getting to that, but we'll cut to that early. Yeah, absolutely. It's part of the, the reason uh, like I, I chime on guys like field reports, always get field reports. Is it journaling? No, it's field reports. There's a difference. And when you read a field report, a lot of the time, the guys will focus on the details, right? Okay, so he said this, she said this, he said this, she said this. What do I do? You're like, right there. You'll read it and you'll see it. It's plain as day once you know what to look for. Like first, who's the protagonist in the story? And sometimes one more is right. Sometimes they'll talk about themselves in the third person. They don't even like I was reading this one last week where it was the guy wasn't even saying I was changing this. I was doing that. He'd refer to like the anger, the relationship. It was always like a third, like taking a step back and looking in, by the way, very common thing for people to do when they're lying, when they're lying, uh, police interrogators would notice this, that the people would um, distance themselves from the words they were using and they'd switch over to the passive voice as opposed to active voice. Yeah, so you need to have that congruence. And a lot of time it's they tell it from the girl's perspective. Oh, she's like this and she's this and she's this and she, 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 she. And you're like, dude, you can't even. And for a lot of guys, I love this one. You tell them, okay, I want you to rewrite this. I don't care if you show it to me or not, but do it from your perspective. And all they do is they, they change, I think it's E prime or whatever. They change the perspective of what their wife is doing to what they were experiencing and what they did. And then all of a sudden, They'll notice that the answer, like, what do I do? Just pops right out to them. Because they have to be honest, right? Instead of, oh, she was being a bitch this and she was being a bitch that. It's like, I'm sitting here watching her run her mouth. And then I realize it's like, it's really starting to get to me. Like, I'm starting to get fucking irritated. I'm angry. It's like, well, what do you do? Probably should find something better to do with my time than sit there and get berated. It's like, yeah, yeah. Now you're getting it. And it's, it's just one of those things where guys have to learn put yourself as your mental point of origin. And it's, it's like, it's such a, a whimsical statement, but it's absolutely true. If you can't make yourself the protagonist in your own mental set of narratives, then of course you're not going to look at yourself first. You're looking at it from everybody else's perspective. Everything is reactive. Uh, Rodrigo Guinea again, 27 sex. Thanks you again, sir. Any thoughts about chicks with male therapists, like professionally or ones that are sleeping with them? Because for the chicks that get knocked up by male therapists, they tend to have kids with more psychological disorders because um, the idea behind this was shrinks are always trying to be shrinks to their kids. And so when the kids are like being bratty or whatever, and they always have this cool measured response, they don't get any feedback. And then like any parent, they're eventually going to get exasperated. And so the kid doesn't see a parent that's... Uh, chill 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 and then all of a sudden randomly one day just blows up so they have like a very i don't know what it is 
that makes my dad so angry. It beca- It's no different than like a drinking wine mom who just gets angry when she's emotional. Right? Nice collar and bracelets. Thank you, Bach. Thank you very much, sir. But if you mean professionally, I mean, therapy tends to work on women better than men. I, I don't really want to stand too hard behind that statement because I just don't care. I guess that's the big thing, too. When you guys ask me about chicks, it's kind of out of my wheelhouse. What helps women? Fuck do I know? I don't know. Fuck your man. Have a baby. Drink less. What do you want from me? But that's the other problem here, Rodrigo, with this one. So, like, any thoughts about this? It all depends. Like, like I said, is she fucking the therapist or is she getting therapy? Your your answer is wildly different depending on the context of what that is. Let's work out why you crayoned over the wall. Yeah, that negotiating shit. That's ridiculous. Kids are so simple and emotional that that whole negotiate and make them understand shit, it never works. Never works. You just have to give rules. Because I said so, unfortunately, is like the best approach. I think it's what's the age until they're like eight years old. That's the point where they could start understanding actions and consequences. Kids need very simple stimulus. Negative stimulus, negative action, positive stimulus, positive action. Fucking the therapist. Well, that's the thing. If they're in therapy and she's fucking the therapist, I'm pretty sure he still gets paid. Um, I miss Carl. I always remember that maybe it's best to learn that this shit walk off in the sunset is for the very unappealing space to be in. Yeah. I feel bad that Rich is like Rich Cooper is still doing some minus your content. I'm like, no, you promised to leave. You got to stay gone. Don't come back. You're too good for this. I can't wait to see uh, Wallard leave too. Like, oh yeah, you're, you're too pretty for this space, man. You don't belong here. You don't, we don't, you don't want to be here. It's bad. Um, I'd say older than eight, maybe go past 10. Yeah. Don't quote me on specific dates, but the idea is, yeah, wait until they're a little bit older. One of my biggest difficulties is the balance of staying focused purely on my mission while giving attention rewarded for good behavior. Am I missing something simple? Yeah. Here's the thing. Women, women don't, women, you pay up front. So here's the thing. If your girl's acting better, the stuff that you're doing to get her acting better actually is the reward. And that's the part a lot of guys forget. They, they think, oh, well, she's acting good now, so I'm going to act more supplicative. Not realizing that their aloof behavior that they did before, that is the good behavior. And that is what gets her acting better. And so they actually act worse as a response to it, doing completely the wrong thing. So the better way to understand it is when your girl's acting well, continue doing what you're doing. When your girl's not acting well, change what you're doing. Now that's reward good behavior, don't reward bad behavior. But that small shift in how you understand the statement makes all the difference. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I going with this one? Yes, I hate to use this term, but it's the funniest thing is when I talk to guys about communicating a congru- congruence in that, it all really boils down to, and I hate saying this, but it's kind of funny. You just have to get in touch with your feelings. Like, what? Really? You're going to get to Oprah after all that? It's like, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Your feelings are not her feelings. You feel horny. You feel irritated. You feel angry. You're just in touch with those. If you are a wealth of abundance, back rubs every day, talking, going on dates, having so much fun. You haven't been laid in two weeks. Do you really feel like doing any of that shit? Not really. Can I have a back rub? No, you can't have a back rub. Why not? I don't feel like giving a fucking back rub. Is that it? Where the hell is that coming from? Ah, I'm probably just frustrated. Don't worry about it. Touch with your feelings. What are you feeling? Fucking horny. (laughs) Now that's not saying fuck me and you'll get a back rub. That's not saying fuck me and you'll get a date night. That's saying when my life is going well and I'm happy, that happiness spreads out to everybody around me. And it's it's a nice positive feedback loop that lets you know that when, and then you just naturally get to a place where your wife is not acting well, that you're just not rewarding it. And then when she is acting well, you're just full of like generosity. It's awesome. She's not laying you. She's playing you. Well, again, I, here's the thing. Um, part I loved about the red pill is that they'll describe feminine behavior from the male perspective, but they won't ascribe motive to it. 
at least the good ones. There's a lot of guys that try, but those never tend to work out. Here's something you have to remember. I have I don't have a name for this concept yet, but I, I say it all the time. Whatever it is you think about the girl's intentions, whatever you think she's trying to do, whatever you think is going on inside of that girl brain she has, there is one thing, one thing, one thing that you can take as gospel. It's that whatever it is you think she's doing, it's not that. It's never that. It's 100% not what you think. I still remember there was a... Uh, Oh, wait, simply too awesome, two pounds, super chat. Is there an ETA on men siring and not raising kids? Um, I guess that'll come up as it comes up. For the most part, these topics kind of... So during the week, I have the the topics that I'm hitting in my outline for, for volume three or volume two of Practi Praxeology. And the Saturday episode kind of spawns from that, as well as the mids watches I already have recorded and ready to go that I edited those during the day. And then on the off chance that something extremely interesting happens on Twitter, I like to bring that up too. But yeah, so um, the siring and not raising kids, it's not really going to be anytime soon unless something super interesting happens. That's more of like a, a uh, sexual landscape one. But yeah, I know the article he's talking about, it's, again, from thing from Whisper, it's just realizing they're not your kids. They're her kids, legally her kids, emotionally her kids. Anybody you talk to, they're like her kids. You'll hear it in the language in that too. And you just have to accept that like you're allowed to be father, a father so long as she's happy with you as the father. And everybody's like, oh, and you remember when Rolo keeps saying like, oh, it's not that she it will, it's that she could. And it's like, yeah, it's really that as is she could. When she's happy, things go great. When she's not happy, things don't go great. And it's more of just like an acceptance of the nature of the of the game. Ryan amog me. I didn't amog you, guy. I just really don't understand what you're trying to say. I was like waiting for you to add something to it, and then you just disappeared. Like I said, add some context, because I'm like, I don't know what you mean by throwing paper, then throwing it up and eat, like eating it. I don't know. Uh, you can add kayfabe. They know it. You know it. But everybody plays along until negotiations come up. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, let me finish off the communication. So yeah, you get in touch with your feelings. Words don't change things. Actions do. I mean, there's nothing really to go on to that. And then, oh yeah. So to end this one off, it was a great thing. Again, this one from Whisper. It's like women can't tell you what to do anyway. They can only express what they want to experience. And so when you get to these communications, this is why subtext is important. Because women can't tell you what to do. You're like, I wish you would just be more direct. They can't can't they can't say what it is you're doing to attract her or to be attractive because a she doesn't really know she just knows when she feels it and b even if she did is he just doing this because he wants to sleep with me or is it because he's doing this because he's genuinely attractive girls can't handle that they need to have some certainty about it so they can't tell you um where'd it go so when you get statements like, you know, if you maybe if you did more dishes, I'd be more comfortable and we want to have sex more. That's the standard chore play thing. Basically saying if you did more non-sexual things, I would reward you with more sexual things. It's not her saying that this is what would make my sex drive good. It's her saying I'm not attracted to you right now for whatever reason, but here's a bunch of tasks I would like you to do anyway. So she can't tell you what you have to do here. She can just says what she wants to experience. And there she just wants to be more comfortable. She's stressed. She's tired. And she feels unattracted. Uh, the be honest with me. This one is good too. Like uh, it comes in like one more police talks about it in his accusations of cheating 101. Be honest with me. She doesn't want you to be honest with you. She wants to feel like you're being honest with her. She wants to sound honest. And this is where his point comes there where if, you, and if you're working on yourself, your relationship, the dynamic is changing. At some point, the girl is going to accuse you of having an affair. And you're probably not. Probably. And so you naturally want to say, no, 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 I've never cheated on you, blah, blah, blah. Ruining your work. Basically, oh, thank God, I don't have to do anything different because he's still not cheating on me. In the end, it's like, and it's that the be honest with me. It's like, uh, you know, I tell you what, if I cheat on you, you'll be the first person I tell. It's a different statement, isn't it? I'm not going to get into what it means. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one I laugh at the most, I'm a good person. 
That means she just wants to feel like she's a good person. She wants she wants to pretend she's a good person. That's why, like, some of the trashiest women ever are like, I'm a good person. Yeah, but your actions fucking suck. But it doesn't matter. She knows she's not a good person, but she wants to feel like she's a good person. So she'll say that. And the idea that words are magical. And so a lot of the time when you hear women talk about stuff, it's it's not that they are telling you what to do. Telling you what to do or telling you what to feel or any of that stuff. It's more so just explaining the outcome that she wants, like the feeling she's looking to get from this. A lot of the times and a lot of the times when a girl says, I love you so much, it's her way of saying just you make me feel in love, which is different. She's not in love with you. She's in love with the feelings that are attached to you. What's the difference? And it's a subtle difference. Anyways. So that's it. I've hit all of my educational stuff. And we can do some bants. After I make fun of... No, let's do a book one. I've transformed. I'm charming. I'm good looking and in shape, but bored. I need something to do next. Another challenge to conquer. Please give it to me. Oh, it's one minute 40. Damn it. One sec. Fix the timestamp. I'm making the effort to get these timestamps good. Because I guess a lot of you guys use them. Which is nice. I hate doing work when nobody uses it. So we got a couple minutes. I'm going to go have some breakfast after this. Have a, I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm fucking dead. I stayed up till like 10 o'clock last night. 10.30 on a Friday night. I'm like, dude, I'm so messed. I slept in till like 6.30 this morning. Haven't had my coffee, haven't had breakfast. Here I am sitting with a bunch of dudes talking about our dicks. What the fuck is this? If you'd have told me this five years ago, I'd have called you an idiot. Uh, Ryan has a huge following in the orange bill. Orange pill? What the fuck's an orange pill? Are you fucking with me, Ash? Don't be a douche in here, man. Orange pill? Fuck's an orange pill. Question regarding that. What do you do if she says, I feel unattractive? Well, what do you want to do? Sometimes you don't have to do anything, sleeper. Sometimes an okay is all you have to do. Just bought some raw milk at a local farm. That'll be my breakfast. You know what's funny? Oh, yeah. So we're going to talk about the sub. You're going to talk about the sub? I'm going to talk about the sub. Fucking hilarious. So, like, you know how... I mean, the death, murder, that... Oh, horrible, horrible. Yes, yes. I've been seeing guys sitting here. They're masculinity brands talking about raw milk because the government doesn't want danger. They want bubble wrap shit. Before the smoking ban, pick up smoking again. And then what happens? A bunch of billionaires decide to like do something dangerous. And everybody's like, these guys are idiots. That wasn't regulated. This stuff wasn't approved. That wasn't safe. That controller is not even a PlayStation controller. It's a Mad Cat's log Logitech. And I was like, I thought you guys were all about that masculine danger fucking two minutes ago. And then all of a sudden something dangerous and then something bad happens. You got like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was like, you fucking guys sitting here in before the smoking ban, but not the submarine. Can't have it both ways, guys. Do you want danger or do you not want danger? Uh, Ryan's got too much melanin to be orange. Oh, is that like a fake tan reference? Yeah, dude. I've had, uh, I've gotten some sun this year. It's actually getting, it's getting there. I guess with the lights, it doesn't, in person, though, I'm looking pretty dark. My credit score is dying already. Uh... Ash, I don't know what you're... Oh, wait a minute. I know what this is. I know exactly what this is. Yeah. I should be running game, but I'm in here with Ryan learning something. Oh, Carl, you're way too early to be here then, man. This is... I'm, I'm relationship red pill. Married red pill. If you're single and you're running game, absolutely go get some approaches out there. Go out there and talk to people. Get your social media thing on point. Get your Tinder profile set up. This stuff is way past, like, I'm single and I want to get laid. It absolutely is. This is way past, I've been dating a girl for two months kind of shit. This is for, I've been married for five years. I've been married for ten years and I have a kid. I, I got cheated on by my wife. I'm getting divorced. I want to know what to do. This week, Russia's at war with Russia. Oh, for fuck's sakes. I can't even keep up. So the Russians blew up the sub. <laughs> yeah. 
Daily Riot is underrated comment. Yeah, honestly, those are my favorite comments. Oh, yeah. So this is the one. It was a <laughs> so some asshole was like running his mouth about how I think I already told the story. But yeah, C-SPAN, man. C-SPAN. Is an ultimatum a declaration of powerlessness? It is. It absolutely is a declaration of powerlessness. All right. Actually, you know what? I don't want. I, let's end this now before the vibe goes down. Um, don't forget to get to Glenn's channel. Who owns the Married Red Pill subreddit? Nobody owns it, man. It's a subreddit. Reddit owns it. The head moderator is a guy called a Solos, though, who I haven't seen in like seven years. So I'm sure he's still around. But I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. Let's, uh... What are we going to use here? Oh, let's end it with Walshy. I don't usually post pictures of my kids online, but they're infants and you can barely see them. So, you know, it's it's fine. But a YouTuber named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone tweeted, showing off the F trophies for clout. So the babies are trophies that I'm showing off. It's perhaps not a surprise that a picture of a proud father would be so upsetting to the sort of man who clearly never had one. <laughs> All right, as always, boys, don't forget, subscribe to the Substack. Uh, Praxeology Volume 1, it's always a good read. It's about learning how to become your own mental point of origin. It's going to be followed up at the end of the year here with Praxeology Volume 2, Running Dread on a Marriage. Beyond that, you can always follow me on Twitter and then the gaming channel, Digital Ryan, where we have some fun and relax and we kind of avoid talking red pill for guys that are already switched on and knowing, so... It's the adult room. On that note, if you haven't drank in your raw milk or your breakfast, make sure you get on that. Catch you guys later.